everyone. Welcome. Welcome everyone to Drink While You Think. Apparently Zoom's got a new audio message. I don't know if you could hear it about this meeting's being recorded. So Yeah, and I got I had to confirm now that 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 you could record me. Oh, we're gonna have to find a new platform for Drink While You Think. But regardless, welcome everyone to this episode of Drink While You Think, even though Zoom's trying to interrupt us, our flow. Your host here, Kenji and I'm Matthew. And um, the sponsor of this week's episode, uh, there is no sponsor. Somebody please send us beer. Send us some beer and you can be a sponsor. And we'll plug you. We'll we plug will plug you. you. We ran out of the last beer. We so. will plug you. Um, I dressed up today. Dude, I was like, what? 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 Like, yeah, I didn't get the memo, but I'm repping. Um, I don't think I've we'll talk about it's been a, first of all, it's we'll a, a about, long we'll talk about that. It it's been, been a long, long time, time since we've done a drink while you think. It has been a long time. It's been like two, two months since you and I've been on. I know you just took it and ran with it with much more fun people. That is very true. Uh, but it's good to be back. We got some stuff to catch up on. We're gonna catch up on things Lots like of stuff. Here. You know why I'm wearing mine? Yeah, I don't know you, but you look pretty. Thank you. It's very nice thing to say, especially since, I mean, I wore it because in celebration of, it's your anniversary week, right? Oh yeah, it is my eighth anniversary. I think you wore it because your wife made you go to a luncheon. She actually did. It is Matthew's anniversary this week, eight weeks. June 1st, we always try to celebrate. Eight years. Eight, eight years, sorry. I mean, it's, it feels it like. It feels like eight weeks, right? It was like nothing. It was like a blink of time. It was like 80 years. I am dressed up because I went to a... Uh, great events um it was it was called women women making a mark and so 12 women in atlanta who are kind of just doing big things in the community um got recognized today two of them are like we're friends of ours so we got dressed up and went down to you know um colony square it was awesome like it was it, i'll give two shout outs um one to Michelle Stumpy, who is honored. She's an attorney in town who I got to serve on the Giving Kitchen board with, and she does awesome. amazing things. And then a really, really dear friend, Wendy Stewart, who um, does a million things also in Atlanta. One of them being she's president of Bank of America here in the Southeast. So she's got a crazy big time job, but like is on a million different charitable things. They're just amazing. I mean, the, the, some of the other guys and the husbands were there supporting were like, it is so obvious that women are just like so far like superior. <laughs> <laughs> You're funny, dude. We're all like, we're happy to be here. We're like kind of talking about football and trade. Hey, what's going on with the Falcons? And we're like, we are just, we're such the guys are such the lowest common denominator. Here's women changing the world and a bunch of us knuckleheads are like. Um, it did make me think about something before. Um, actually, first. What are you drinking? Talk about what we're drinking. Um, you go first. Okay. I don't know if this is going to be on the thing. So my favorite brewery is wrecking bar right my favorite restaurant is wrecking bar so they have been bottling now so i've got well they had this is the label looks like this oh, but nice. this is the bovine justice imperial milk stock but look at how cool they do like they do different varietals for sure this varietal is not going to be on there this one has cinnamon and mocha no way so um yeah it's pretty it's pretty cool but it's a kind of a cool deal that they do that is super and it's cool. got the not a thing but it's like oh, wax like yeah dude look so. at you getting all fancy so i'm gonna i'm gonna try to figure out how to open this because i've never had one but you do um, that while well, i do mine um this is a good thing though we're both drinking local i'd love to drink local that that is by the way check out wrecking bar that is my matthew's favorite place you can usually find them there on the weekends um look at this and this is not a camera trick that's a huge can. Like there's, there's my look for perspective. This is the Bogey Band Double IPA. It looks like it's something to have to do with. Does that look like um, does that look like frisbee golf? But this is from Contrast Artisan Ales um, up in Chambly, Georgia, not too far from me. And my awesome wife was there with some friends, and she, of course, brought a bunch of beers back um, to me. It's huge though. I don't know if I can finish this whole thing. We'll do our best. I don't, I don't know if I can open mine. What, while you're opening, do you, have, <laughs> do you have any, um, let's see how this looks. I got I always have to do my pour, you know, it's, it's important for me to Dude, double I'm, IPS, I'm, how hazy this is. We're gonna have to pause this so I'm not embarrassed that I can't open it. Oh no, that's the best part is you being embarrassed. 
Let's see what's going on with this thing, man. I don't get embarrassed very easily. And this is kind of embarrassing that I can't open a beer. Look at that bad boy. That is a, it's not quite a hazy. That's a, this is like a nine point something, 9.7%. Mine's a 10. Oh boy, we're going, we're going deep. We got two local brews, big containers, mine open. high ABV, and Matthew can't even open this. Okay, while Matthew's playing around with his beer, we're just going to make fun of him the whole time. Um, I'll, I would do a cheers with you, but since you can't open yours. Um, cheers. Yeah. Uh, oh, pain quick in the shout out. Um, I, I, I did have on my mind. Oh, that's interesting. Hold on one sec. I'll go back and taste this again. Mm. It's good. Not super fruity. A little hoppy. This is double dry hot. On the topic of me being dressed for this great event on women making a mark. It did make me think of in our profession, a couple places I just wanted to give shout outs to as well, uh, communities of women doing amazing things. We may have mentioned before, but um, I'll mention Women Talk Money and you can go to womentalkmoney.com. However, the woman part is, is spelled with an X instead of an A in there. It's kind of the alternate woman spelling. That's Madeline Pratt's group. Um, that's a great community there. It's broader than just accounting folks. So it's entrepreneurs, business owners as well. And then also our really good friend who the last time you and I were on together, Twyla, just launched um, a women in accounting kind of hub, basically a collaboration place for women in the profession. And I wanted to shout her out too. And you can go to womeninaccounting.online and join that community. I know they've been having some good conversations lately um, with folks on Clubhouse which we haven't gotten to Clubhouse really yet. I've done a little bit of it. I don't think Matthew's done any yet, but you can check them out there. We'll post some links there, but um, for all the women in the profession, great couple of great alternatives to go out and bond, um, talk, support, and help out other women in the profession. Um, us guys in the profession are going to sit here and struggle doing things like opening them up, opening up beers. Like this is, this is what we do in the profession. That's pretty... That's pretty true right there. This, this is a great, I mean. This is an analogy on, 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 on us everywhere. I feel like you're going to yourself. I'm, I'm a little concerned. Well, I've never had one. Have you done one of these wax things before? Yeah. It I might just still, got it. It might still have a bottle cut top on it, doesn't it? it? It does. And do you know what I didn't bring down? A bottle opener. I didn't bring down the bottle opener. So you're really going to have to pause. Okay, we'll do a quick pause for Matthew. No, go go fast. I'll I'll talk here for a second. I'll, I'll move the other way. Um, okay, so check out those communities. I'll actually show them on screen here. Um, but so here is again womeninaccounting.online. This is uh, Twila's, and take a look over here at um, Women Talk Money. And this is Madeline. So great community to come check out. Matthew's back with his bottle opener. And now we'll talk. So Matthew, while, um, I guess I'll do screen share again, while you're still working on your beer, you're getting it poured. Actually, I want to see this thing. Oh, that looks good. That's a Matthew beer. Nice and rich and dark. Oh, yeah. Okay, now the official cheers. Have your drink. Cheers. Uh, it probably tastes so much better. You had to work so much harder for it. Yeah, that was worth it. We get, why don't you go ahead and get fired up here, Matthew, because now it's time for us to, of course, talk about bench, right? <laughs> wow. $60 million Series C. Um, there's a couple of things I want to unpack here, but I also I always like to start with you on... Um, you know, what, what's your thoughts on the deal structure? You're always got a good head for deals. Like what, what jumped out to you on this series, $60 million series C? Well, it, first of all, it looked not as crazy at the pilot valuation, right? Cause if you scroll down, they say they have 11,000 clients. Correct. Yep. But I know that, I mean, so if they have 11,000, right. And they're doing, Six hundred dollars a month, uh, pro, which is probably high time. I mean, they could be doing some decent revenue volume, right? 
What, what's that say? Do, do it. At, um, let's just split the difference. Let's, on that. let's, let's do it like 450. I was going to say, four, yeah, that's near the top of their. That's almost 60 million in revenue. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, that's that's pretty legit. Okay. Like, but this is where I get into splitting hairs. Like, it says they they work with 11,000 entrepreneurs, business, business owners. owners. So, so, I mean, those... does that mean you and I count as one or two? Right. <laughs> exactly. I mean, and yeah. if you have a, five-way partnership like what does that mean but 650 people like that's legit like yeah yeah there should be 10 million per hundred right right so they didn't disclose a value a, a post money did you what was your no, i kind of back of the envelope post money assuming that they didn't take off which they probably like everybody's taking some off right now but um if they didn't take some off i think we had the post money somewhere 200 250 million so I was um, talking to some other uh, accounting firm owners today too, and someone else put that same number out there as well. Just as a like, hey, I think this is probably what it is. And I was like, yeah, that sounds about right. So that's a be that'll be ballpark order magnitude. Yeah. Just say two hundred million. You know. Okay. Um, yeah. You know, the other thing that jumped out to me too is um, they talk about some integrations and stuff here, and I'll get that in a second. But like, also looking at it, you can see here. It's integrating with Sage. Sage is also an investor of this round. Which I think they've done this and maybe some others. So was um was Shopify. I believe Shopify. Shopify so. was too. Shopify and Sage were the two of note that I thought were interesting. Um, I so Amazon invests in Pilot. Shopify invests in Bench. Yeah, but also Sage. You know, they're maybe we should go up after Etsy. Etsy, if you're watching this, <laughs> we'll accept a. A 200 million pre valuation, like uh, pilot. Well, we'll give you a deal. We'll give yeah, you 100 million pre. Well, that's, yeah, it's, it's a, um, but I, the Sage one was interesting because, right, first one of the, one of the big major players in the accounting firm space putting money into um, bookkeeping shop. Yeah, which I think somebody, I think David Leary may have mentioned they're going to, I'm sure they're going to have a great analysis of this. Uh, like I'm looking forward to listening to the episode on Cloud Accounting Podcast next week, digging into this because they do such good research on this. But I think Sage has done some before, but they've got to be in catch-up mode, right? I mean, they can't. I mean, they're so far behind zero and, and into it. Like uh, I don't know if it's make a few bets out there and keep an eye on some of these. I don't know, but yep, it's interesting. Um, what's while we're talking bench? Um, I also thought this is something else you brought up. And I like to play this, I don't know if it's called a game or not, but I think it's super interesting to me is let's look at somebody's pricing page. Oh yeah, they just changed this. Yeah, so let's walk through like what we've seen this different on their pricing page. Um, I, 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 I used to have the slider for revenue or for yeah. not a revenue, for expenses. Expenses, yeah, adding slider for expenses. So We've kind of gotten rid of that. I, I think to me, Pricing pages are the most important place on almost any business's website. Because to me, it's like, it's, it's how you're communicating to the client or prospect. Clearly, what are we going to do for you? How much is it going to cost? And I always like it because it's kind of a rubber meets the road test for me. And I will tell this, I'll say this about Bench. I've always had very, very good looking, aesthetically pleasing pricing pages. I mean, I think they do it really well. But I think there's some interesting things to unpack because that was a big one. They moved away from the whole like, Expense range. Why do you think they would do that, by the way? Um, I don't know why they did that. But I think it's probably confused people and people don't like it. But the other thing they did, if you scroll down, tax is included in this number. I was going to say that. included in their other number. So all the packages, tax is included. Um, it, which is, is interesting. I mean, it's again, that's... I'm not going to say that's not a lot of bang for the buck if you fit these things. It's not bad. Holy cow, though. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. Um, here's what else, here's something else I noticed too. I was looking, and I I actually like the the pay monthly, pay annually. You know, I like that. Um, well, surprise! I was looking at on the pay annually. The discounting. Because sometimes I felt like you can kind of look at when people do the pay annually versus pay monthly, and you look at the percentage discount they're getting. Sometimes that has 
in theory, that's had correlation to uh, retention, like how, you know, what yeah. churn rates look like to mitigate. So um, on this pro plan, that's a 20% discount. That's crazy. But over here on this flex one, the most popular, it's like a 11, 12%. And then yeah. it jumps back up here, like a 15% on the smallest one core. So it's kind of weird. Like the discount jumps all around. But do you think that's because, is it more aesthetics? Like, hey, you want to see a, I mean, is a, yeah, they're looking for steps and like what, what they want to do. And Ryan Lazanis's big thing is they shifted it to the way he says to do it, which is put the most expensive one first. You flip it. That's, yep, that's becoming more popular is flipping it. So Lazanis is all like, hey, check it out. The, they, they put the more expensive one first, just like it, like, because he preaches that. It's pretty funny. Yeah, I, I do like it. I mean, I like it. I saw someone recently who was experimenting with one that had, they didn't follow in order. I'm like, it just drove me nuts. I'm like, I don't like that. Like it was, they did something like they almost reorganized them based. The first one was the most popular, but then the mm -hmm. other two after it were lower and higher than the most popular. Yeah, it's just it read weird, but I like, I like this. Um, yep. I think it's a good, clean look and feel. So one thing I'm going to jump back here for a second to, I thought this was interesting around this statement made about launching to in conjunction with the, the capital raise. Bench now offers first of its kind of integrating integrated offering that includes banking, cards, payroll, full service bookkeeping, taxes, and advice in in, a, in, in single streamlined software. Um, customers can now spend on bench cards. So I was like, oh, that's that's interesting. They must have a bunch of you know. It almost made it look like too they were doing banking, um, but when I looked at this, really. This just looks like all they've really done is they've just partnered with, like if you come in here under banking, this existing bank accounts, um, if you do the lowest package, their core package, you do bench, you, you basically, the only thing they're gonna, they're gonna include free business bank account through Lending Club. So it's a partnership, it's not their bank. So they're all doing right. it all through partners. Um, the same thing jumps out I guess I'd never noticed this before. Maybe it's always been there. Payroll, right? So take a look at payroll. If you use the lowest package core, the, they will only run payroll through if they'd use Gusto. Um, same thing on payment processors. they will only hook to very specific payment processors, Amazon, FreshBooks, PayPal, Shopify. And then the higher level tiers let you integrate with other processors. So, mm -hmm. It's not really, at least it, I read it initially in the press release, like, oh, they're building banking. They're building their own car, they're, which since it seemed to be a little bit like the way that Scale Factor went trying to build up their own things. Yeah. Really, it's like, no, no, we're just building deep partnerships. And in fact, if you want to jump on this low core plan, you're going to only use very specific partners of ours. That's kind of how I read that. I don't know if you take it that way. I don't know what you think about that. Kind yeah, of that's what I got too out of it. It's it really is. interesting. I, I mean, I think what I thought was most, I mean, I, I mean, I thought this was like a, this is a good sign for the industry. This race, I'm like, this one is, I mean, they have 11,000. If they have 11,000 customers, like it's a good sign. They're, they're, they're cruising, you know? And I think, yeah, I, it, it, I like seeing, again, the integration with people like Gusto, right? Or yeah. um, others who you're like, that's just a smart decision because are you really going to go build a better payroll solution than people have already built them and worked on them for years, whether it's Gusto or even Rippling or JustWorks. There's a lot of them out there. But like, are you really going to go do that? And I think that's a, it strategically seems smart to me, like, how oh, no, we're just going to go do deep partnerships and in this package, this core package, you want this low price, it's got to be you're working with one of our partners, right? Yeah. Kind of a, I, I, I thought it was smart. I mean, I'm giving them some props on that. So um, it's, it's, it's interesting. I wonder what all the, I mean, I haven't dug into it to see what all the caveats and where all the things are. When I started rabbit holing a little bit, and this will be one for you and me, just because nobody, very few people are this nerdy or want to watch us do it. I did go into the terms of, you know, it's kind of fun to go out in terms of services. You know, you, you go down into the legal doc stuff below and start looking through. And I'm always curious about things like what do all those specify? And what if I do sign up for an annual contract and I want to leave early? And um, 
Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I, I thought it was a good sign as well too, regardless of what the valuation is. Bench has been, they were the first ones to kind of do the whole technology play, raise some capital. And um, they've been kind of quiet. I mean, they've been kind of on yeah, the down. I've never met them. I've never seen them or met them anywhere. Have you? I haven't either. Ian, is it uh, Ian Crook, who's the CEO? Um, not Ian Crook, um, but I, I, I have not met them either. They're not very in the space very much. I mean, they're Canadian companies, so maybe they're kind of staying up there these days. But um, I don't know. I, I, you and I, with Acuity, we've always, from at least a marketing perspective, taken cues from them. I feel like they've done a nice job. Oh, yeah, they've done a great job. I've always thought they've done a great job. One of the people to watch. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, so anyway, I thought that was interesting. On Anything else on, on Bench you want to mention? No, they're good. Congrats okay. to them. I like that one. I, I think that, that one deserves a congrats. I'm more worried about the pilot guys getting out from under the prefs. That one, I think they could, they have a shot. I don't know if we talked about it yet, but the press. So like someone who does not quite understand that, like how, it, how would you define, like when you mean getting out under the press, how would you put that in play? Oh, I mean, so I'm sure in this round it's happened. I'm sure the Series C investor requires to receive their, they put 60 million in, but they have to receive $60 million in exit before the Series B, A, or the common holders, which are the founders, yeah. you know, get their money back. So if you're not, if you don't exit for more than 60 million, you get squashed to nothing. You get nothing out of the deal. Usually if you have a, um, if you give a liquidation preference like that, that's at least their money back, which is not uncommon at that size round with that, that, that amount, which is, I mean, that's great. But if you're 60 million in revenue and multiples go back to, they're called an accounting firm and it's a one times revenue multiple. <laughs> yeah. Like the only person to get their money back is the series C, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So if you can't exit to pilot, <laughs> uh, it's just interesting. It's yeah, just it is. I think it's the thing that people who don't spend a lot of time in this space where venture capital is at stake is it's easy to look at the big gaudy numbers of the size of the raise or what the valuation is. Um, and there's so much that gets involved in the actual terms. And as Matthew mentioned, the prefs, because that that can completely change the whole dynamic structure of everything there. Um, and so anyway, it's- a, it's Anybody a, that's ever worked on a waterfall table knows what I'm talking about. Oh yeah. If you're, uh, if you and your clients are having to kind of deal with crazy cap tables, waterfall tables, or, you know, you're out there having to deal with like Carta all the time, then you know exactly what we're talking about. Um, yeah. It's always fun for marketing to put out the press release on the raise. And then everybody, everybody internally, especially accounting is running around trying to get the cap tables updated. And then most of the management team is freaking out like, okay, we just took all this capital in. We've got to go hit a new bogey that just got raised up very, very high. So, yep. um, all right, well, let's, let's finish. Let's flip it off of accounting for a second. That's the big accounting news of the week. Um, why are you wearing that shirt again? Oh yeah. Tipton was accepted to the University of Maryland. So uh, we are going big 10, which has more than 10 schools. And um, he's a Terrapin. So College Park, Maryland, very excited. Go Terps. Um, yeah, for those who have not been watching along all the time, many of our episodes are like, we're talking about our kids and our oldest kids are both going off to college. Mine is going to American University. I think that's the Colonial League, I think. I, I don't know, but you don't got football like I do, so. No, you don't. But um, the funny part that Matt and I realized is right now we're at each other's house all the time, every week, we're about 20 miles away. 25 miles between our houses. Which is, which is that's close in Atlanta. Um, but um, the boys now are gonna be how far apart? Nine miles. My son's going to American University in DC, right on the border of Maryland. So the two boys are gonna, our, our sons are gonna be like right there. They're moving thousands of miles or hundreds of miles away and moving 16 miles closer to each other. Which yeah, is just the weirdest distance thing ever. In, in less than half. So it's uh, a wild, wild kind of experience. And probably it may annoy them because it may be more time where you and I go up there and like bug them and things like that. And probably. So yeah, we'll have to hit football games there, which still is weird to me because when I was in college, Maryland was in my conference and I was not in the Big Ten. I was in the ACC. They were still there. 
but That's you know, fun. allegiances change, people get older and things like that. So uh, yeah. yeah, good process for, for the kiddos and it'll be exciting for them to go on the next step. So you, you got Maryland swag all over the place now. Like I don't have an American shirt yet. Dude, that was the first thing I did. I got my Maryland swag, proud dad. I got him a sweatshirt and a t-shirt. I got, I have three t-shirts now. I'm, Do you I'm, really? I'm, yeah, I got Ivy one. I didn't buy with Laura one because she, she's going to get she whatever she wants. She won't wear it. Oh, she'll wear something. She's, I'm not going to try to guess what she wants. So. Yeah, I've got a birthday for Rochelle coming up, my wife, next week. And <clears throat> let's just put it this way. I don't buy her clothes or anything like that because she's like, no, no, that's just not a good. Yeah, it's not a good look. You're not going to do it right. I'm, I'm taking her out for a big shopping day and I'm going to let her buy whatever she wants because that's me doing it. It's not a good thing. Yep. Not a good thing. Um, all right. Any last things you want to hit cover before we do some rating of the beers? No, I'm good, man. Let's that's do awesome. it then. Let me, uh, let's flip over. This is going to be tough. We got some funky beers here. I'm not sure we even get on the register. So Wrecking Bars, Bovine, Justice, Imperial Milk. Can you see it or no? No, you're on the other one. I know. Technical difficulties. Let's try that. Technical difficulty. Please stand by. At least you had a beer opener. I did. Yeah. I didn't have to fumble around. Mine is called Bovine Wrecking Bar. Oh, yeah. That's uh, Bovine. Bovine Justice Imperial. Bovine Justice Imperial, yep. Yeah. See, sometimes sometimes they will with these have variations of them. Um, so this is the, this the is milk this stout, is but this is the mocha and cinnamon one. But I don't think they'll have that. But this is a four seven five. You can. I've done. I've I've drank that one too. Four seven five. That's a solid rating. That is this just is almost almost my perfect beer. Almost a perfect beer. Um, this one. Again, I'm, I'm, I'm very into the IPAs, especially the hazies. This is not a hazy. You can see it's, um, it's more, it feels like it's more of a West Coast style, or West Coast style that's kind of more bitter. And so it's good. Uh, I'm not going to rate it as high. Um, I'm not, it's going to be tough to get all the way through. Let's see if it's even on here. Holy cow, mine's not even on here. That's how, I mean, that's how next level I'm going. I've got beers that aren't even on. Mine wasn't even on there technically. Mine was a variant of this one. Let me try, let me try this again. Hold on. Contrast. Contrast. There it is. I mean, I'm going to try. This is a tiny little place that we got the beers at. Um, oh, there it is. There, there we go. What, 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 it, what? That's not it. None of these are. What's it called? It's called the Bogey Band. There's 69 more beers. Oh my lord! I'm giving when I get to it. I'm going to give it like a three five. Um, I like it. Man, this wow. got to be the most brutal episode of Drink While I Think to watch. There it is. There it is. It's going to be brutal. I mean, it's great when there's all these other people on here besides you and me. Like other people on here just bring up the level so much. Oh, we didn't. We didn't talk about a sad, sad thing. We didn't talk about Julio Jones yet. That's going to be a day when we're going straight liquor. We're going to just going to, if Julio Jones actually gets traded from Atlanta, we will record an episode with straight liquor. I will, I will commit to that with you. So you're going to commit to that. And it's going to be, that, that may never get aired, but I will. <laughs> we'll make that in our private, a private channel. Matt is so devastating that Matthew froze up on us and just had to leave the conversation. Um, I don't know if he's going to come back or not. It'll be, it'll be rough. Um, hey, cheers, everyone. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to, if you want to come on, talk shop, talk whatever you want to talk, please do. Send us some beer and you can be the proud sponsor of this amazing video series. And just drop us some comments. Cheers. Thanks, everyone. See you, everybody.